friends some time back i spoke to you on under trials today i'll speak to you on prison reforms that are so essential and needed especially in these digital times three out of every four prisoners are under trials in our country and over 90% of the inmates in delhi and jammu and kashmir are under trial now this is the highest in the past 25 years now where is total number of prisons inmates rose by 1% in a couple of years back the from the earlier years the number of under trial inmates increased nearly 12% in the same period as reported by the prison statistics india now under trials come now comprise 76% of the inmates which are, which is up from 69% for data available in that same period now the release of under trials to declined by 19.6% during the same time compared you know and two in every three under trials belong to the marginalized caste groups all the prisons have an occupancy rate that exceeds 100% do these figures tell you a tale article 436 a of the code of criminal procedure provides for the release of under trials who have undergone more than half the prison term for the accused offences which they would have otherwise got is there a periodic list of inmates published who are eligible for early release under this section are these prisoners actually released are the prisoners at least aware of this provision answers to all these questions may seem to be simply in the negative In an increasingly digital world, we use high-end technology to solve almost all our problems, however difficult they may be. We provide the best solutions to the world. Now, in that light, is it difficult to create a database of all the prisoners in the country and generate auto alerts when a prisoner becomes eligible for release? In case a prisoner is to be kept in jail in spite of the provision. is it difficult to flag an appropriate reference several from the marginal communities and even those from the forward and the backward communities are vulnerable to illegal detention false confessional statements and arrests most often there are no means to seek bail their cases never come to court and have no other means either our matters such as civil rights individual rights protection political injustice and public morality not important for prisoners of what use is this provision in the criminal procedure code if it is not applied uniformly and intuitively can our judiciary use their judicial power to articulate and enforce the appropriate sections and provisions so it benefits the society can our judiciary indulge in some activism even if no constitutional article supports it i'll bite to this specific problem can our judges deviate from standard precedents in favor of progressive and novel social policies even if it borders on judicial activism are not judges encouraged to use their powers to redress injustices especially when the administration in the government fails to do so should someone raise these cases of the hapless prisoners why doesn't it happen naturally haven't our judiciary invented or intervened in several cases so motto and pils are filed in public matters We all know the case of restructuring of the Board of Cricket Control in India (BCCI). Even as it is recognized as a private body, committees of eminent people were appointed to reform it. 
Similarly, the Supreme Court ordered the then UPA government to set up a special investigation team to investigate the scourge of black money. That the NDA government completed the task is another matter. But the courts did it. Due process of law means that the procedure which is established by the law must be just, fair and reasonable and equitable. 436A is a provision. How is due process of law seen to be followed if the provisions in the law are sought to be violated? Haven't our judiciary in the past overreached their jurisdiction? Haven't some of their decisions actually been in the domain of the legislative and executive? A little activism on their part may resolve. Several societal incongruencies besides addressing the legislatures and executives in action. They may even promote better governance and build checks and balances. Redefining the Article 14, 19, 21, 32, 226 in the spirit in which they were written in the Constitution to prevent the state from acting arbitrarily and infringing on the citizens' fundamental rights is now called for. Of course, such judgments may set a precedent for other judgments. They may result in loss of faith in the judiciary. They may limit the state and central machinery's functioning. Some statutory and legislative laws may be violated also. But then, if some evils can be corrected, why not indulge? Such decisions, however, must not transgress the boundaries of personal gains or be interpreted as judicial overreach or judicial adventurism. So activism must not translate into overreach and adventurism. What we also need are prison reforms. There is a detrimental impact of imprisonment, not only on individuals jailed, but on their families too, and even the communities in which they may live later. Several in crime are poor and disenfranchised in some way. Their families experience great financial distress even as they have to cater to new expenses such as the cost of a lawyer, prison visits, etc. Poverty and crime are related and very well documented. As an evolving society, should we not reform the prisoners rather than incarcerate them without trial? Have you ever wondered how much of a financial drain it is on the economy of a country to maintain the prisons and the prisoners? A sentence of imprisonment is a deprivation of the basic rights of liberty. Does it restrict a prisoner's other human rights as well? Except for those which are naturally restricted by their being in the prison. Our prisons are anything but healthy. They are overcrowded and with poor sanitation. Since most prisoners are poorly educated and socio-economically deprived, they have no access to adequate health services. The prison sentence can only further deteriorate their health. Many may end up with new health issues that they may never have had before. <coughs> Consequently, even the prison staff may become vulnerable to most diseases. Our prison rules are archaic. Prison reforms are necessary in this context. So the human rights of prisoners are also protected. Should we not create a conducive environment for their social reintegration? Our legislature has the power to do so, has the power to make many laws. The more question, however, is if such power is absolute, what do we do? Is it not time our judiciary reviews the validity of the laws passed by the legislature and also start the process of prison reforms. Friends, 
our courts must not only protect the rights of its free citizens but also of those who are in the prisons they must also be seen to protect such rights after all is the quality of the people found in our jails not a reflection of our civilization let me stop here friends for you to think back on what i said for this saturday however let me promise you i'll be back the next saturday with another interesting episode and until then thank you dhanyawad and namaskar